All right, good morning everybody and welcome to my studio, this time with the microphone on. That's the second stream in a row that I've done that. All right, good morning everybody and welcome Oh, and to I have not muted. This time with the okay. Um, yeah, streaming is, uh, streaming is hard and I'm not the best at managing all these wires and microphones and pieces of software, but here we are. So um, here's what's up today. So, uh, how to host a dungeon version two rules are just about done. I'm working on layout and copy editing and that sort of thing. So I didn't want to do any heavy play testing today because I'm not going to add anything, um, anything serious to the rules. And thank you, Vigorous Bog, for letting me know the mic was off and good morning. So I'm going to do something a little bit different today. Uh, one of the things about how to host a dungeon, uh, let me introduce myself first. Uh, uh, my name is Tony Dowler. I am a game designer and artist with a love of Dungeons and Dragons and dungeon maps. I have made a game called How to Host a Dungeon, which is a game where you create a dungeon historically, simulate the monsters and the adventurers and lost civilizations and see how they interact and end up with a really cool dungeon map. And I'm working on version two of this game, which is being funded through Patreon. Go to Patreon and search for Tony Dowler and you will find it. Uh, and also it will soon soon be available at a web page near you. So uh, you can also follow me on Twitter. I'm Tony Dowler on Twitter, and you will get um, the latest news and announcements there on as well. Twitter, I'm Tony Dowler on Twitter. Uh, and I'm having a little bit of trouble with, why can I not, okay. Sorry about that. But all that said, today we're going to play How to Host a Dungeon version 2, but with something a little bit different. So in How to Host a Dungeon, usually how it works is you um, create a world, a civilization appears there, uh, it digs some tunnels for monsters to live in, and so on and so forth. But really you can play this game with almost any kind of map with a little bit of imagination. So uh, for inspiration, I pulled this map out of my, um, um, out of my work pile and zoom in a little bit but this map uh, calls upon my love of um, car graveyards and highway infrastructure and garbage dumps and necropolises and hell so this is just a drawing of a vision of Dante's Inferno uh, filtered through my interests. But I thought, hey, you could play how to host a dungeon in this world, a world of uh, flaming rivers of fire, uh, haunted necropolises, lost souls. So I started a map to that effect, and I wanted to see where I could take it. So uh, I'm not done this yet, but over the next few minutes, I think we'll finish this up and start a game on it. So let me tell you a little bit about what's going on in this map so far. So uh, we've got some mountains across here. We've got a river kind of flowing through the middle of it. Let's call it the River Styx. We're going to add some features. So up here we've got a car graveyard. Um, let's add, uh, I'm going to draw a massive fissure in the ground and I'm going to make a wall of flame coming up out of it because that's infernal. After I draw this stuff, we're going to kind of reinterpret it in how to host a dungeon terms. Um, down here, we're going to have a necropolis. Uh, what's a good color for drawing my necropolis? Let's grab this brown. So I'm just going to draw some mausoleums here. Just really simple cubes. 
like so. Maybe a triangular one. Let's make a fancier one over here. Yeah. Uh, now, in How to Host a Dungeon, tombs are a thing. So, and in that game, you mark tombs with an X. I'm just going to mark each of these with an X so that we remember these are all tombs. In here, I'm going to draw a fancy demon tower to overlook this necropolis. with a massive gem set in the top of it. We'll even draw some glowy marks. And in How to Host a Dungeon, we have this concept of epic treasures. So let me find something to represent our, our epic treasure here. Let's um, I've got a, yeah, here we go. I'll just grab a fancy piece of polished glass. Um, so the car graveyard, we're going to call that a, a gem deposit because uh, the wrecked cars are a source of metal, treasure, and equipment for whatever monsters live here. Uh, let's see, let's do a little more. Um, I'm just going to kind of lay out this necropolis a little bit, give it some streets and city blocks. Now, How to Host a Dungeon is a game with, with rules that tell you how to draw stuff. But right now, I'm, I'm um, just kind of, of riffing and making up my own stuff here. I'm just kind of free associating. So over here, I've already done, drawn uh, the beginning of an underground labyrinth of tunnels. And uh, the reason for that is that How to Host a Dungeon Inferno version has some slightly different rules. Not all monsters in How to Host a Dungeon can dig tunnels. They have to live in the tunnels that they find. So that makes the layout of these caverns potentially matter a little more because monsters can't just tunnel to get to whatever they want. They may have to use a tunnel that already exists. So I'm, I'm just drawing some uh, underground caverns. These will be under these mountains here. Okay, I've got this area here that I've colored out purple, and that's because I'm going to have a uh, I'm going to have a good old-fashioned mushroom forest. And if you've played How to Host a Dungeon with me on this channel before, you know that this is this is nothing new. I we've done this a bunch of times in the past. So another thing that I'm I'm introducing for this is the idea of barriers. So we've got this river here and I'm going to draw a bridge across it. The idea being that monsters, unless they happen to be aquatic monsters, will have to cross at the bridge. And here we've got this cliff 
This is also going to be a barrier and those monsters can fly or have the ability to tunnel down it. And I'm actually going to draw right here a fortress guarding this gate through the cliff zone. And we'll mark that with the fortress symbol from how to host a dungeon so that we know it's a fortress. Okay, let's see. A few other little things to add here. I'm going to add a cavern with a cave entrance here. Let's add a cistern, a source for the river. Vast cave full of water. Um, that seems to be a pretty good start. I think I'm happy with that. Um, just going to draw a few lines in the neighborhoods of the City of the Dead. Let's add a magical well in that room, and let's let's add another legendary treasure there. And we'll use this. Yeah. This is better. It's polished stone. Okay, so now we have a unique dungeon map with eight regions, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now uh, as per how to host a dungeon rules, we're gonna we're gonna spawn some monsters into there. Hmm. So a couple little rules changes before I do this. So monsters and how to host a dungeon can uh, a couple of the actions they can do our our scout and explore. So I'm going to say monsters that can scout can also dig. So they can dig new tunnels to connect these rooms, uh, build caverns underneath the mountains, etc. Uh, monsters that can explore, I'm going to say they can build bridges or ladders or stairways so they can get across the rivers and cliffs more easily than other monsters. There. Now let's um, spawn some monsters in to start this age. And we're going to start with some more lawns. And they're going to arrive in Sector 4, so the Desert of Fire. So the more lawns start out with three population markers and one treasure. Um, and let's draw them. We're just going to draw them some tents to live in here. This is the Morlon village. And now the Morlons will take their turn. So Morlons can explore. Um, Let's have them. I'm just going to draw a dotted line. They can't go through that fire. They've got to draw a dotted line to show they've explored down and have discovered this fortress here. Um, and they are near a source of fire. And more lines like fire because it allows them to build a refinery. So we're actually going to have them immediately build a magma refinery here. Powered by the demon fires of the underworld. Next monster, Knolls. These guys are a new monster. They're going to appear in the fungus forest. I just came up with the rules for these pretty recently, so I guess we'll be trying them out. 
so knolls are not so much for building but let's um i'm just going to draw a camp here knoll camp so uh the they don't seem to have any neighbors right now so I'm just going to have them wander a bit through their territory and a Medusa the Medusa lives in zone 7 the Medusa lives in the necropolis um, so Let's use purple for our Medusa. Starts with two treasures and a bonus token indicating her magical powers. I'm just going to have her uh, move right into this, this tomb here. And maybe I'll, uh, I'll just draw some additional rooms to show she's using some of this area to store her treasure in. Um, and she is going to scout because she has no neighbors yet. So I'm just going to draw some dotted lines to show she's started to explore these ruins. All right, and that's the first round. Pretty uneventful as we just have monsters arriving. So now each of these monsters will take another turn and then more monsters will arrive. This is a pretty slow start, but that's totally fine. Um, She's going to continue to scout, which will take her as far as the bridge, the river, and partway to the fortress. The Morlons, um, they always explore, so I think they're going to send a party down to this obelisk in the necropolis. And in fact, I'm just going to draw some Morlon carvings on that necropolis just to show that the Morlons have been there. So now that the Morlons have come here, they now know about the Medusa because they've encroached upon her territory. So uh, they can interact. But Morlons are not a very aggressive. They're more of a building group. And they have a magma refinery, so they can use that to increase their treasure hoard by harvesting the magma. So I'm going to add another tent to the village just to show it's growing and give them another treasure. And finally... The gnolls, the gnolls love to fight, but the Medusa is a little too powerful for them, so they're going to continue to wander. Let's have them wander up to the bridge area. And then every turn, a new monster enters the game. A purple worm. Okay, interesting. Purple Worm comes in in area number seven, so in the necropolis. So, now it's time to roll some dice because the Purple Worm is coming into conflict with the Medusa by invading her territory. So, this is just a straight up dice roll. We'll use the bigger die for the Purple Worm, the small one for the Medusa. Uh, it is a tie, which the purple worm would normally win because this is happening on the purple worm's action. But the Medusa has her magical bonus, which she can spend to raise her dice by one, so she actually drives the purple worm away. Let's use yellow for the Medusa. Let's use purple for the purple worm. So we'll, uh, we'll send it over here. draw a hole for the purple worm to live in. Purple worm. Purple worms are nomadic. The first thing they do is always go looking for a source of food. So this purple worm um, 
Uh, purple Worms, their card specifically says that they can tunnel through solid rock, so I'm going to say that it can just tunnel its way right underneath this escarpment up to here, where it can hunt Morlons. So, some Morlons die when the Purple Worm enters their territory. Next, the Medusa. The Medusa is also a hunter, and now these, um, I think she hasn't crossed the bridge, so she doesn't know about the gnolls yet. So, I think she will explore the fungal forest and discover the gnolls, and also discover about this fortress over here with her scouting action. Morlons. Continuing to explore, let's, um, this time they're going to explore their way up these mountains. I think um, they're going to, uh, they could leave this area, they could migrate away to get away from the purple one, but I don't think they're going to because they have their magma refinery, they're going to continue to generate treasure. And then the gnolls. They're going to come explore this dungeon complex. And now the syndicate arriving in area number four. So the syndicate arriving in this busy area. Um, they could try and drive out the Morlons or the Purple Worm to claim territory, but actually there's this fortress sitting right here, which is like a perfect headquarters for them. So they're going to set up their base in this strategically located fortress. Yeah, so imagine a bunch of mafia crime bosses arriving in hell and immediately setting up a casino. That's what's going on here. So, um, the syndicate, uh, usually the first thing they want to do is set up a racket, which costs them some treasure. I'm just going to um, draw some expansions onto this fortress to show that they have started to set up their base of operations here which will allow them to hopefully do some more stuff next turn. And now we'll shuffle these and start with the purple worm. Well, the purple worm always wanders, so we're going to have it continue to tunnel underneath this region. I'm going to roll randomly to see which group it hunts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It hunts the syndicate. Now the syndicate takes their turn. Um, the purple worm is too powerful for them to fight. They have set up a racket, so that generates wealth. Now they need to do something to do with the purple worm. I think they're going to recruit they're going to um, try and press gang some Morlons into Syndicate service. So there's a dice roll. The big dice will be the Syndicate. And the Syndicate fails. Uh, that costs them some treasure, attempting to recruit that Morlon. Knowles. Um, still exploring the dungeons, looking for someone to fight. The Medusa. Well, the Medusa um, has to eat. She has to hunt every turn if she can. The only monster group she can currently reach that she can't hunt is a syndicate, so the syndicate is destroyed. Uh, 
I'm just gonna draw a little stone dude, petrified dude there. Um, now she can take another action. Well, she can take this treasure. It's in her territory. It's right there, so she'll add it to her hoard. Good enough. And then, finally, the Morlons. Um, continuing to explore. Discover this cave. Increase their treasure. They're already a very wealthy group. And that's their turn. And we get some troglodytes in area number one. So in this area that the um, the Morlons have already explored. So troglodytes, subterranean species, can never spawn on the surface. So um, I think I'm going to put them in this cavern here with their treasure. Uh, now, I think they are going to start by exploring. So I said earlier that monsters that can scout in this version can dig tunnels, and ones that can explore can build bridges. So they can't tunnel into this mountain. So I think they're going to have to go exploring the surface world. And I'm going to explore them in this direction, because if they can eventually reach the car graveyard, they can start mining those cars for useful materials. All right. Knolls keep on wandering. Really, they have become a wandering monster. Purple worm. Let's send the purple worm off in a new direction. Send him over here to open up a tunnel in the car graveyard. Nothing for him to hunt this turn, but he'll be back. Troglodytes. Going to continue to explore. And we're going to have them build a bridge over that river. Because we said earlier that we're going to let exploring groups build bridges and such. Let's this little paint pen is not in very good shape. There we go. So next turn they can possibly start making use of the car graveyard. Medusa keeps on scouting. I think this puts her into Morlon territory, so next turn she can start encountering the Morlons. Um, yeah, she doesn't have much. She does not have much else she can do. This card has an error on it. Something to fix. Syndicate got wiped out already. And the Morlons. Continuing to explore, continuing to harvest. And now we need something new. A Wanderer, which is a test version of the wizard. Let's 
grab a red bead for the wizard wanderer in region number two. So up here in these mountains, let's put him in the dungeon with his treasure and his magic. Um, wizards always explore nosy fellows. So he knows the gnolls are coming. Um, what can he do? Is there anything he can do? Well, he could just leave the area. If they come and attack him, he's going to be in trouble. Well, I think he's going to stand his ground. And we'll see what happens. the gnolls. So let's go through these rules. Gnolls can always fight denizens. Uh, the wizard is an alpha, which is a very powerful monster. They can't actually fight him. Um, I guess we'll just uh, keep moving them in this direction until they reach the edge of wizard territory. Now they know he's there. Next turn they can try and steal from him is one of the moves that they can make. And the purple worm will tunnel into the dungeon. This is a very mellow game. So, uh, the Medusa has counter encountered the Morlons, so she eats one. Um, then, she can do not much else. Continue to scout into the dungeon, across the river, past the fortress. Um, Marlons will continue to amass huge amounts of treasure. Wanderer will, um, the Wanderer can harvest magic, but it's a bit of a journey to get down to this magical tower, which I think is the only, the only place. Well, I think the wizard's gonna, the wizard's gonna move out. This is a Wanderer wizard after all, so he's gonna move into the graveyard for now. Troglodytes can start scavenging for treasure from the cars. It's a pretty mellow game so far. Let's see if the next monster shakes it up a bit. An adventuring party all right, so the adventuring party is going to arrive um, in sector number six, um, which is the underground labyrinth. Let's use orange for them. Adventurers here. So they're immediately going to grab that treasure. Um, they are then going to try and drive off that purple worm. Big dice will be the adventurers. And they are successful. The purple worm goes back to the caves under the graveyard.
So one thing I'm also already noticing about this idea of making it harder for monsters to create new rooms is the map changes much more slowly. Knolls. Boy, they really do, they really do need someone to fight. Well, I'm going to migrate them down to the edge of the graveyard too. Eventually they'll catch up with somebody that they can fight. That's what gnolls like to do. They like to fight. They're designed to wander around the map, fighting other monsters. Uh, if they're successful, their numbers will grow and they'll become more powerful, but if they're unsuccessful, they can also get wiped out pretty quickly. So the troglodytes, who are also operating in this area, continue to scavenge, amass treasure, and then what else can they do? You know, they have enough treasure to build an idol. And they build an idol, they gain population and magic. Alright, our Medusa has also reached the graveyard, so she could potentially um, uh, have contact with the wizard. So, well, the first thing she does is she hunts, so I'm afraid the Morlons have been wiped out, leaving this massive treasure lying around. I guess um, the Medusa can take one of those. Makes, makes sense. Then she is going to um, extort from the wizard. She threatens the wizard with her powerful gaze attack uh, if she gets the higher dice roll. It is a tie, but the attacker wins ties, but the wizard has magic, which he spends to win the extortion. So um, the Medusa gets nothing out of that. Let me just, yep. Just want to make sure I'm following my own rules. The purple worm. Well, I think the purple worm needs to go near a source of food. I think, unfortunately, for the gnolls, it's going to be them. The gnoll gets hunted. The adventurers. Um, so the adventurers want to amass treasure so they can build a stronghold. There's nothing here for them to do, nobody to fight, nobody to extort, so I think they're gonna go exploring. So we'll explore them. Um, towards the mushroom forest. So unfortunately this labyrinth I'll have to go around here to this old knoll campsite first. The Morlons are gone. The Wandering Wizard. He is going to cross the bridge into the necropolis. Dangerous as it is. Because he's a match for the Medusa. He can take her on. Now a new monster, some nomads, traveling nomads arriving in area number one. So let's use I guess I'm gonna have them wander in across these plains from far away. So uh, nomads always wander, so let's have them wander down to the flame barrier. I think they can pick up one of these treasures because they're just lying around. And then they're going to try and trade with the trogs. So, 
first to give the trogs some treasure. They dice off, they fail on their trade roll, so that's all that happens. They came out second best. And now another turn. I think it would be interesting to make a version of how to host a dungeon with some different rules for different kinds of maps and outdoor maps. I think it needs a little bit of tweaking. Nomads. Nomads always wander. Let's have them wander to this fortress here. It's a nice strategic location. And then they're going to trade with the Medusa. Um, that is a successful trade. That gives them some magic. Make a note to myself about There's something about the trade move I want to change in the next version. Every time I play this, I find new things that I want to improve. The gnolls um, gonna wander out into this graveyard. Um, yeah, I think that since the troglodytes are actively scavenging the graveyard, that the gnolls can fight them, even though the gnolls have not found the trog home base. The trogs are operating in this area, and gnolls always want to fight, so this is gnolls versus trogs. The gnolls handily defeat the trogs. A trog is killed, and the gnoll population increases because they won a battle. Now, what else can they do? Then they're going to relocate because they want to get further away from that purple worm. It's a threat to them. Troglodytes keep on scavenging. The Medusa. Well, she can hunt one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, then she's going to trade with the nomads, which she fails at, so they just get their cash money back. Purple worm. Could go either of these directions looking for food. One, two, three, four, five, six. It pursues the trog, the not the trogs, the gnolls, and wipes them out. The adventuring party is going to continue to explore the dungeon. and then attempt to drive away the purple worm so that they do not get eaten. Uh, that is a tie. The attacker wins a tie, so the purple worm has to move away again. Finally, the wandering wizard. So he is going to harvest this magical site, which gives him magic. Our new monster this turn is an ooze. An ooze. Let's start it up here in this cistern. At the source of the river Styx, something hideous begins to grow, and it does grow every turn. Every turn the ooze will add population. Um, the ooze can hunt 
fight or explore. Well, there is no one nearby to hunt or fight. So I'm just going to draw some oozy slime to show that it is extending its reach down this river. Just going to continue to harvest magic. Um, yep. Then the ooze continues to grow. Um, the ooze can hunt humanoids. The troglodytes are operating in this area. Are troglodytes humanoids in this game? Chaotic Amphibian Lizard Humanoid Miner. Yep. The Knolls sadly wiped out. You know, something I forgot, purple worms don't carry treasure, they leave it behind. So that treasure is still sitting there for someone to find. The Troglodytes, well... Continue to harvest. And then they're going to breed to replace that lost population. The nomads will wander into this area and trade with the wizard, which they succeed at. They will take money this time. Purple Worm can't pursue the adventures because they drove it off. Um, let's go eat some ooze. Purple Worms aren't picky. The Medusa. Let's see. Uh, nomads are the only monster around she can successfully hunt. So, trouble for the nomads. Uh, then she can try and extort from the wizard again. And uh, that's a four to a three, but the wizard can spend his magic to win the dice roll. And the adventurers certainly will scoop up that treasure. Um, now they have enough treasure to build something. Well, let's see. First, they try and extort. So they're going to threaten this wizard, which they fail at. Um, and now they're going to relocate to the middle of the mushroom forest, spend their treasure to build, let's see, a stronghold, a wizard's tower, or a thieves guild. We're going to do a stronghold. adventurers are so badass that dying and going to hell did not stop them from building a stronghold. And now something new. Skeletons spawning in area number three which is way up here in the mountains. So... Two skeletons and two treasures. And skeletons are a slow and steady 
So they're just going to scout. I'm just going to move their tokens to show they've explored into this dungeon area. Medusa. Um, let's see. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six to see who she hunts. She kills one of those adventurers. Then, yeah, she's going to trade with these guys. See if she can replenish her magic. But she does not succeed. The adventurers. Well, uh, adventures are all about extortion, so they're going to threaten, at least this adventuring party is, they uh, threaten the nomads who spend their magic to win the conflict. I think today is going to be a pretty short stream because I'm not feeling so great, but I did want to try this idea out, and uh, I think the results are pretty interesting. Might turn this into some... Uh, Add-on rules for how to host a dungeon at some point. The troglodytes continue to harvest. I think um, if I made this into an add-on for how to host a dungeon, I might try something like um, in regular how to host a dungeon when a monster group gets rich enough it becomes the villain and tries to conquer the dungeon which could be cool here but maybe I would have a thing where if a monster group gets rich enough or amasses enough magic it can start building like special um, like cities and fortresses and just sort of expand the map a little more to kind of make up for how the map doesn't change quite as much in this version as it does in the regular version. Anyway, troglodytes. Let's continue to increase their population. Ooze. Always growing and expanding and exploring. And um, hunting. Wizard, Harvesting Magic, Purple Worm, Wandering Around and Hunting, and the Nomads. Wow, if they can just successfully trade, they're going to try and trade with the Medusa. They fail. If they successfully traded, they could actually get enough wealth that they would then leave the map, which is what they do if they get rich enough. All right. Let's spawn a monster and do one more turn here. Uh, we got a city. The city of Brazen Crag. In the graveyard. Huh, okay. I think in this context, it is a city of trash. A city built of piles of demolished cars and wreckage. of trash. Um, the city of trash has not explored much so they don't really have any neighbors yet but they're going to do some scouting so I'm just going to draw some arrows to indicate their expanding territory. Troglodytes. 
I think given that they have moved into the City of Trash territory, we can say these two monster groups have encountered each other now. Um, so the Troglodytes can fight. They only fight monsters that have attacked them before. Uh, I want to double check the ooze and make sure that um, looks like the ooze is not is an alpha predator, so it's too powerful for them to fight. So I guess they're going to just continue to increase their numbers. Um, troglodytes can be a very powerful group, but they can't deal with alpha predators very well. The ooze continues to expand, now having reached the bridge. Um, I think, can they, is there someone they can fight? They're going to fight the nomads, why not? Uh, and fails, actually. Uh, an ooze encroachment on the nomad camp is driven back. The wizard continues his harvesting operation. The nomads cross the bridge into the forest to trade with the city. Successfully. City then tries to extort them for more cash, also successfully. Um, and then they're going to try and form an alliance with the troglodytes so the troglodytes don't attack them, but that is not successful. Purple worm. Killing the city. Skeletons. Scouting. Medusa. Wipes out the adventurers and the fortress falls into ruin. And the adventurers didn't get to take their turn. Too bad. All right, so that was a super short stream today. Um, but thank you for showing up. Sorry this is so short. I'm just I'm not feeling so great today. So after this, I think I'm going to have some hot soup, take a long nap, and um, then maybe write up some of these results uh, for a future, uh, a future experiment. But that is uh, a slightly weird version of How to Host a Dungeon. Thank you for showing up and playtesting today. And uh, take care. Make lots of dungeon maps. Bye. Thank you, Bjork. I will do my best. I think I just need to shake off a cold. All right. And with that, I wonder if, um, I almost feel like I should raid Adam Cobol, but I don't, I don't even know how to raid in this thing yet. Maybe I'll figure that out for, for next stream. Or if, I'll tell you what, if I, um, if I get up to 10 washers, then we'll, we'll go raid someone at the end of my next stream, which will be hopefully in two weeks. So until then, take care, be good.